Hello! Today I want to show you how to make a little lotus book. These are really fun books. Uh, first of all, because they don't require any sewing. Uh, you just do some folding and gluing. And um, also because they contain little compartments. In this example, I have uh, the closures made of ribbons on uh, both the front cover and the back cover and then uh, you can tie them in different ways. Um, it also has a little handle that you can uh, like uh, put through uh, a belt um, and carry it. You can also uh, take these ribbons and wrap them around to tie the book closed. Um, there are many other types of closures that you can use. But uh, what's really fun about these is not uh, the cover and the closures, but rather what's inside. And that brings me to the second uh, reason that uh, these are fun to make. They contain uh, pages that you can open up and uh, draw pictures, uh, paint pictures, create collages, uh, write down things, um, but they also act as little pockets. So you can actually uh, carry other smaller books in uh, this little um, lotus book. And this one was uh, started uh, by a, a student and uh, wasn't uh, completely finished. But uh, you can see that uh, this particular uh, page was uh, begun with collage and then there's a little uh, pamphlet book. So the little pamphlets that we uh, made in another video you can actually use to uh, fill this, uh, this book. So what you'll need for your lotus book is first of all you'll want to cut a couple of square covers and this is just foam core. You can use uh, plain cardboard um, you can use whatever material you want, but it should be fairly stiff. You'll also want uh, paper, and this particular lotus book, and the one that I showed as an example, use just standard uh, size paper, letter sized paper. So 8.5 by 11, and then trimmed to an 8.5 inch square. Okay. So that's the main thing that you need to work on is to uh, get your pages cut into squares. For that size of a book, these covers should be 4 inches by 3 eighths uh, square. But it's very easy to uh, use any other size of paper um, as well. You just, uh, after you have folded your pages, then you just measure that and uh, make the, the covers that size. You can also make them slightly larger if you want. Now for the covers, you can either paint them, you can leave them plain, you can cover them with paper, or in this case I'm going to cover them with uh, book cloth. So I have uh, made some book cloth, once again with just 8.5 by 11 inch paper, and then um, I will be uh, trimming this and folding it over and making the covers uh, with this kind of purple marbleized uh, swirly pattern. You also want a couple of ties or closures. These are just some uh, ties that were on a shirt um, that kind of detracted from the shirt, so uh, I trimmed them off and I'm going to use them for my book. It's also handy to have a bone folder and of course you'll need some glue. It's also handy to have uh, some scissors and as always I like to use a cutting mat, um, a quilting measuring tool, and and a rotary cutter um, to do a lot of the cutting and trimming. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is uh, cover the covers with our book cloth. And this uh, doesn't actually have to be quite this 
large. I could um, use this size, maybe a little bit bigger than that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to a more manageable size. Um, the problem that you can encounter when using uh, book cloth or paper that is too uh, large for the cover that you're covering or the board um, is that it's more difficult to get it uh, firmly adhered and, uh, and smoothly folded over. We also want to trim the corners. I don't trim it directly up next to the corner. Um, there are different styles of uh, putting book cloth and uh, paper on a cover, but this is just uh, kind of how I happen to do it. I'm using uh, PVA that uh, dries acid-free, and I'm going to use just a little uh, scrap of cardboard to smooth out the glue. You can also use a brush. Be sure to get it all the way to all of the edges and not to leave any uh, dry spots in the interior either. And then we'll kind of center our cover, press down. You want to try to get the corners um, as neatly folded as possible. And I like to kind of fold this little uh, excess right at the corner under both of the flaps that I'm folding over. It just seems like it makes a little bit of a tidier corner. Okay, and then once I have that uh, adhered. You can also take your bone folder and kind of smooth it out a little bit. And you can also uh, paint on top of the fabric if you wish. Um, I usually wait until after the glue dries uh, to do that. Like If you want to add uh, some thin uh, washes of metallic paint to kind of make it shimmery, which I might uh, end up doing, I'm not sure. And then let this dry. You can wrap it in uh, wax paper and press it under a book so that it remains flat. While the covers are drying, you can begin to fold your paper. And the end result is this form. As you can see, it opens and closes nicely. It has uh, these uh, surfaces on the outside that can be decorated or drawn on, as well as all of the uh, the surfaces on the inside of the page. This is a very easy uh, form to fold. The first thing that you do is you curve the paper over and match it up. You can see that right here this isn't quite lined up so just pay close attention, line it up very precisely and then secure it with one hand while you crease it with the other. And it's helpful to use your bone folder or another tool that uh, you've fashioned yourself, um, like out of a popsicle stick or tongue depressor. Okay, so now we have a valley fold, okay? Which means that it goes, it's uh, concave, it goes in. Now we're going to open it up we're going to make another valley fold in the opposite direction. Line it up very precisely. So now we have a fold coming this direction and a fold coming across this direction. Vertical and horizontal, and both are 
belly folds. Okay. Now we're going to turn our paper over and then turn it so it's diagonal and now we're going to fold this straight up and down but di on the diagonal. So match up this point, hold it down with one hand and crease it with the other and then come back and crease it once again with the bone folder and open it back up. So as you can see, because we turned it over, um, these are all mountain folds on this side and this is the only valley. If we turn it this direction, this is a mountain fold, meaning that it's uh, convex, it comes out toward us, and all of these are valley folds. So that's uh, the main thing to remember in this uh, form, is that the diagonal is folded the opposite direction of all of the um, horizontal and verticals. Okay, so we just uh, point it uh, so that all of the uh, horizontal, horizontal and vertical are valley folds and push that little uh, point in and then it just folds up naturally. You can use uh, regular paper for this. You can use uh, thicker cardstock. You can use um, book cloth so that one side is, is fabric and the other side is paper. Um, you can use a lot of different um, approaches and you can make your book as thick as you want. Um, as you make additional pages, and I only have four pages here so that won't be very um, a very thick book, but um, I've, I've made them uh, with a lot of pages so that they're, they look almost like an accordion or a little concertina that you hold. and. Uh, as you build them up, they do get more challenging to uh, glue the pages uh, together evenly. They want to kind of twist. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now I know that I said uh, that all you need are the ties. I'm going to actually um, add some beads to the ends of these ties. and So I'm just going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm using some decorative uh, embroidery thread and to one end I'm going to thread uh, these beads on double strands of thread as you can see With the second needle, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to tie a square knot. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this so you have, you have a little bit of a, a tassel. And then we can do the same to the other one and that will just uh, make these a little bit more, you know, they'll just kind of uh, catch under the, uh, the other ribbon a little bit more easily. Okay, so after you have pressed your covers and folded your paper and uh, prepared whatever ties you want to use or closures, uh, now it's time to start uh, gluing it all together. And um, the first thing that we're going to do is we will be gluing on the flat sides of our folded um, pages. And it's important, you know, if 
if you want your book to uh, open all up on the same side, it's important to keep the open sides pointing the same direction. So you don't have one this direction, one glued that direction, one glued that direction, but rather keep them all uh, glued in the same direction so that they'll open the same the same way. If you want to experiment with gluing them in different directions, uh, you can. Just keep in mind that uh, usually the ties or closures are on two sides of your um, book. And those two sides are usually the two sides that are open. So that helps keep whatever uh, little uh, cards or pamphlets or little booklets or pictures um, safely enclosed in the pages. If you have them tipped in different directions, um, you will want to have closures on all four sides so that uh, you don't lose things that you are meaning to keep. You can use a glue stick if it's a good glue stick. Um, you can also use uh, the PVA glue. Uh, you'll want to have the glue cover this uh, surface entirely and uh, with the PVA you don't want it to be too thick um, otherwise uh, your pages kind of buckle and uh, things like that so if you do have access to a good glue stick um, that's great but uh, a lot of times glue sticks are not quite as um, strong the adhesive isn't quite as strong so you know, you have to kind of uh, make your choice based on uh, several different factors. Um, I don't have a glue stick available right now, so I'm going to use the PVA. Notice that I'm not putting as much glue on here as I did for the uh, gluing the book cloth on. And I'm also going to spread it out much more thinly. But I'm still trying to get it to the edges, otherwise you can have some uh, problems with the structure of your book. Okay. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to see uh, where your page is lining up, so just kind of uh, look at it from above. And you can open it up, take your bone folder, Press it on. Now I could simply keep uh, adding the glue to this uh, side. I actually like to add it to the new page because if any glue does ooze out, um, you know it kind of it's kind of there. And whereas if you do it over here and it oozes, you can clean it up before putting it on your book. But one of the big things is not to put a whole uh, glob of glue on your page to begin with. Try to get it out to the edges, um, but don't move a big uh, puddle of glue out to the edge, otherwise it will ooze over the edge and make kind of a mess. Okay, now I want to line this open side up with this open side. So I'm going to turn that around. P 
PVA is very sticky glue. So you don't want to uh, put it on there crooked and then try to peel it off. Um, you can end up with a problem. The important thing is to line up these two points. Oops, sorry. The main, uh, I can't remember how I started that sentence. It's very important to line up the two points of the new pages and then kind of uh, shift the paper a little bit until you get it uh, lined up on, on either side. But this point is the kind of the point to be paying attention to while you're re-gluing a new sheet on. So I'll go ahead and do one more so you can kind of see. There might be a little bit much glue, I don't know. And when your cardboard is getting all floppy like this, it's probably a good idea to get a new, um, a new piece. Okay, so lining up the new page with the existing one. Line up the points. Line up these two sides and then close it and press. Open it back up. Take your bone folder and press the edges right up next to the fold and then take the side and smooth out and press the interior toward the point. Okay. 